Hello everyone and welcome to Think Yourself Healthy Podcast. I'm your host, Heather Duranja. Let's dive into today's episode. Hello everybody. On today's episode of Think Yourself Healthy, I have special guest, guest Sal Raquel joining us for the second time. I'm super excited to bring him on again today so that we can talk all things Ascension. If you have not heard that first podcast, I encourage you to go back and listen to it. Answered so many questions for many of individuals who have heard this thing called Ascension, was curious about what it's all about. He does a phenomenal job of really breaking it down into a digestive friendly way that we can all consume. So Sal, thank you so much for being with us today. Thank you for having me on. So tell the audience a little bit about who you are and what you do. Well, I've been doing personal growth and spiritual growth activities for about 45 years. And uh, I started out in the mid 1970s in the Silva Method, uh, where I learned how to access higher and deeper parts of myself. And it's been quite a journey since then. I went through a phase where I was doing rebirthing, which is a breathing yoga. And later on, I started channeling various spirit guides. And I developed a technique recently in the last 10 years called timeline healing, which is a powerful therapy uh, that works on past traumas. I, I consider it to be significantly more Uh, powerful than traditional psychotherapy. I'm not saying there aren't uh, times when traditional psychotherapy might be the correct approach for someone, but if a a person is ready to move very quickly, uh, timeline healing is one of those approaches. I've written seven books. The most recent one is um, The Secrets of Unlimited Energy, and this is about how to tap into the the zero point frequency, which we call the the fluctuations in the universe at zero point. Uh, and there, there's a whole it's a bit scientific, but not too bad. There's just a tiny bit of math in it, not much. And uh, so that's the latest of my books. Wow. I did not know that you had a new book. I am an avid fan of yours. I've read all of your books. To be perfectly honest with the audience, your books were life-changing for me. It allowed, the way that you present information allowed for me to take little pieces of knowledge that I had gathered over the last 20 or so years of my journey, and it really brought everything full circle. It kind of put all of those puzzle pieces together. I just love the way, I just love the the presentation, the way that you deliver the information. I just think it's, it's so impactful. And for, you know, the average person who's trying to figure this all out, you just really cut to the chase. You just get straight to the point and put perspective to, to everything that we're experiencing. So I really appreciate your work and I can't wait Thank to get you. my hands on the, the secrets of unlimited energy. Also, for those that are listening, Sal does an incredible job of being able to deliver this information and slowly indoctrinate the science in a way that you can grasp and understand and build upon. So I also love that about the approach you have with your writing and, and the way that you present this really scientific quantum physics type of information uh, to the audience in a way that they can really grasp and understand. So thank you. Well, thank you for that. Uh, So uh, I think the topic for today is Ascension, is that right? Yeah, so I'd like to talk to you a little bit about, you know, what's going on right now. You know, uh, the other day, August 1st, I understand that Earth rotated around the axis of the sun at a faster rate than ever has been recorded in history. I am an advocate um, reader of the Schumann Residence, and I'm staying on top of all of these energies that are coming in and how they're impacting our subconscious and conscious minds, our physical bodies. So I'd kind of like to chat with you and and kind of get a feel for what your understanding of everything we're going through right now is. Um, okay. Because, 
Well, let's start with the vibration of Earth, and this is not directly correlated to Schumann resonance. And there's conflicting uh, information out there. One in one piece of information says that the actual Schumann resonance has changed very little over this over the centuries, and the other says that it's gone up dramatically. That the frequency has increased tremendously. I'm not sure how to measure the changes that the Earth is going through, other than that uh, some of us are very much aware of these changes. And we're going to, for the sake of simplicity, call them spiritual changes, um, that they're not necessarily easily quantified in the physical realm. So I use a density scale, and I say that the dominant or, or level of activation, which means what frequency is the Earth vibrating at if you take all of the ups and downs and you average them because what i measure is a composite average vibration it doesn't mean that there aren't fluctuations where it goes up and down but if you average all of those fluctuations out you get a certain number and basically the number system ranges for common everyday people between three and five okay Third density consciousness is more or less the animalistic survival, procreation, uh, focus on family and survival type of consciousness. Fourth density is more the higher mind, intellectual pursuits, metaphysics, uh, art and, and creativity and imagination and psychic ability. That's level four. And then level five is, is more what most people would call the transcendental spirituality, including uh, the idea that, that we are children of God and that we're radiating uh, that knowledge and wisdom of God out from the center of our being into the creation. So those are the three primary levels. There's levels above that, which we may probably not get into today. Uh, because these are the three that seem to be the most um, relevant to what we're experiencing. And the Earth herself has a composite level of vibration, which is different than the vibration of humanity. The composite or average vibration of humanity is around 3.75, about three quarters of the way through third density. The vibration of the Earth is around 4.5 or halfway through fourth density, uh, actually about 4.52, so slightly higher than halfway through fourth density. And the Earth has gone all the way from 4.0 to 4.5 in about 10 years. So it's been a phenomenal increase in vibration. Now, humanity's vibration about 10 years ago was around 3.70. Now it's around 3.75. That's not a very fast evolution for humanity. And now humanity is about three quarters of a level below the ambient vibration of Earth. And this is the reason we're experiencing a lot of the immune system failure, which my guides predicted 15 years ago. They were talking about immune system failure. It's in the third, fourth, and fifth books, I believe. And... Um, and it, it, they didn't say exactly what the mechanics of that would be. They just said that up to half of humanity would eventually exit the Earth due to immune system failure. Well, now we can see that between GMOs and plastics and electromagnetic radiation and the uh, irresponsible use of vaccines and pharmaceuticals and many other factors, um, that this is indeed happening. It looks like, they even said, it's going to look like exotic new viruses are going to end up in the population, whether they're intentionally created in a laboratory or seem to naturally show up. The point is that we have over 150 different viruses in our body at any given time, so why aren't we constantly sick? Because normally our immunity takes care of us. It's like the guard at the door. So, so they predicted a lot of what we're seeing now in the world. But the real reason why there's so much immune system disease in the world is because humanity has not kept pace with the ascension of the planet. 
uh, the average person is three quarters of a level lower than the vibration of Earth. And when you're that far out of phase with the Earth, uh, basically it's like the soul metaphorically saying, you know what, this is too advanced of a classroom for you. We need to get you a more basic classroom. And so we're going to transition you into a third density planet somewhere else that's not quite as advanced as planet Earth. Mm -hmm. Of course, this is a metaphor, but it, but that's kind of how it is. For So about half, one half to three-fourths of the population will likely be exiting the Earth over the next, say, 10 to 20 years. Uh, the timetable is a little variable. They originally predicted that by 2030, the Earth's population would be considerably less due to this this exiting of large numbers of soul. Now they're saying between 2035 and 2040 will be the the large exit, starting now, but going until probably 2040. And at the same time, the ascension will be following a similar track. And the ascension is nothing more than human beings who are vibrating at fourth density, moving into a fifth density vibration. And uh, physically, a physical ascension is when the physical body reaches level five. Spiritual ascension is when the consciousness is at level five or above. And so there's already millions of souls on Earth that are at level five or above consciousness, but there's just a small handful that have reached level five in the physical. Can you, and, can you, ex could you describe what that physical fifth density actually looks like? Well, um, up to a point, you still look like a human being. Maybe your skin is a little shinier and more radiant. But at some point, you actually do start to radiate light. You become luminescent to some degree. I think around 5.5 in the physical. So it's uh, there was a, an episode of Star Trek The Next Generation that, that came out back in the, I guess it was 70s or 80s. And there was an episode where, where these, this guy was being pursued by his society for, for being a danger to society. And at the end of the episode, he turned into light. He was like one of the first of his species to turn into light, pure light. It was a remarkable episode. I don't remember the exact name of the episode, something like Transitions or something like that. But it was, it really kind of summed up what the Ascension is about, that it is the next phase of humanity, but we've gotten kind of sidelined, and that's a whole other story that we may not have time to go into. It has to do with our unresolved original cause, which is unresolved beliefs and traumatic experiences around the idea that we're separate from God. Mm -hmm. And because of that, quote, fall from grace, or quote, original sin, which is not it at all. It's really, you could say it's an original error. A uh, Course in Miracles is good at describing what this is. Mm -hmm. It's it's when we, we identified with the lower dimensions, and we basically, our consciousness got sucked into the lower dimensions because we identified with them, and we forgot our true divine heritage, and there's a lot of trauma around the initial descent into matter that, that most human beings have not resolved. Mm -hmm. And that trauma is what keeps holding us back. It's why we keep rising and falling as a civilization. Okay. Uh, we're in the, according to the Hopi, we're in the end of the fourth world. And there's going to be some degree of death and destruction. And then in the emergence of the fifth world according to the Hopi prophecy. And, and it's pretty much obvious that, that that's, it, this is detailed in my book, The Real History of Earth. Yeah. So, so ultimately, this is evolution, right? Ultimately, it's evolution. It may not seem that way when you're caught up in the, uh, the planetary dark night of the soul, as it's often called, which is that period right before the breakthrough into the higher state of consciousness, where the ego or the the set the separation idea, which we call ego, is holding on for dear life, refuses to let go of its limited position, and so we have all this backlash. The 
the so-called power elite that want to keep control of planet Earth. I always tell people that the, I call it the so-called power elite because it's not real power, it's false power. Right. Real power comes directly from God, comes from within us, and it knows who it is. It doesn't need to control anyone, manipulate anyone, oppress or enslave anyone, or try to co coerce or force anyone to do anything, because true power would have no need to do any of those things. If, if I'm truly in my power, why would I want to control anyone? Mm -hmm. It would make no sense unless I was coming from fear of inadequacy, which is which is what's in the subconscious mind of these so-called power elite. Right. You know, that they're they're this insatiable desire to control others because it gives them a false sense of superiority or a false sense of power. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, the reality is, is that humanity has been pretty much in a form of enslavement for quite some time. Could we yes. use the word, this fall that we experience, this is kind of getting trapped into this, what we would maybe refer to as the matrix? Is that mm -hmm. pretty, pretty safe to say? Okay. Exactly. Yeah, the matrix is nothing more than the beliefs and structure of society. That's all it is. Right. So ultimately, over these last 10 years where Earth has been ex uh, ascending at a much faster rate than humanity, a lot of things have been happening. There's been lots and lots of chaos that we have experienced specifically over the last three years, which anyone who's read your work, it's almost comical to get, ex you know, get exposed to the information in your books and then seeing it play out in real time, it, it almost makes it kind of like a comedy in a sense to watch it unfolding before our eyes, knowing the truth of what's mm -hmm. really happening. And so for me, you know, with the work that I do and with trying to share these messages, I get excited when I get censored because I'm like, ooh, I'm speaking truth. This is the stuff that they, you know, these so-called ones in power that elite society doesn't want the other 99 percent of humanity to know that all of the power truly resides within them and they are just a puppet pulling strings that really doesn't have any kind of power over our sovereign our sovereignty our sovereign being well there is the power of belief and uh, you know my guides have called everything pretty much exactly right but the timetable has not been right and almost everyone that does any kind of prophecy has gotten the timetables a little off and the, but they admit exactly why it's taking longer to go through this ascension than originally planned and that is because even negatively polarized human beings are powerful creators yeah. and they are creating powerfully in a negative polarity. I think the law of one material talks about that a lot. Yeah. And so we have to um, educate people. And part of it is this left right paradigm in the United States right. is a real trap. It's like you have the pro Trumpers and the never Trumpers. You have the, pro-abortion and the anti-abortion you have all of these different polarities right and a lot of the more uh enlightened members of these uh groups are pointing out oh you know the power elite wants us to fight among ourselves and be divided because they use the divide and conquer philosophy and this sort of thing and so it's it's really um i think people are starting to wake up to the fact that if you are polarized to any particular ideology or philosophy that you're not going to be able to move truly into fifth density consciousness you're you're stuck in fourth density the the realm of ideologies and the isms you know isms are belief systems right if there's a word that ends in ism you can almost be guaranteed that that's a belief system <laughs> That's a great, that's a great tip for individuals listening to simplify and have a better understanding. So ultimately what I'm hearing is that we can refer to this as kind of the collective consciousness and through the collective consciousness, it's having an impact on how quickly or how slowly this ascension process occurs. 
Correct. And and yet it is it is accelerating. The the COVID situation was a massive acceleration event because it's waking up a lot of people. Some of the waking up is is a painful process for people. Uh, for example, uh, up until recently, uh, a lot of people were blissfully unaware that almost every government in the world is corrupt. Yeah. But it's almost impossible to ignore the corruption when we look at how the a simple illness has been handled by the so-called medical experts. Mm -hmm. um, and I'm not essentially an anti-vaxxer, although I've, I'm anti-COVID-vax mm -hmm. because it <clears throat> hasn't been safety tested, among other reasons. But, right. but basically, it's, it's woken people up and they, they, in a sense. It's like, oh, maybe our government and our doctors, our medical profession really doesn't have our best interests at heart. Maybe they're more interested in staying in power and making more money than they are in our health. You know, now that's a basic concept to most of us listening on this podcast, but to the vast majority of those stuck in third density, this is a revelation. Oh my God, maybe my doctor's not God, right. you know, just because he wears a white coat or she wears a white coat, you know, and, um, you know, maybe I should not just blindly say yes, sir, to those who want to put a needle in my arm, you know? So, so it is a wake up call and, and, and a lot of people are waking up. They're starting to realize, hey, wait a minute, the media does not tell the truth. Even the fact checkers are, are biased. Yeah, I have to I have to tell you, when I read your book, Life on the Cutting Edge, and you really laid things out in terms of what to expect, what your guides, specifically Leah and, and whatnot, had predicted, um, it allowed me to take the anger the fear, the judgment that I was feeling around everything that was happening in my reality, it allowed me to approach it from kind of a place of excitement, recognizing that all of this chaos was actually happening for us. And as uncomfortable as it was to have to be ex you know, exposed to all of these disbeliefs that were always truths in my world, I recognize the gift and the beauty in it. And so my hope is, is that with this podcast, you know, those that are listening, that are getting introduced to information that might conflict with their belief systems, that instead of getting scared and, and buying into the fear and all of those negative emotions, they can get, they can find excitement in, in this. Is there any, anything that you have to say to the listener, um, around all of the chaos we're experiencing. And my assumption is it's going to get worse. <laughs> it's going to get well, worse. Well, it's going to get worse if people are stuck in fear. Okay. Uh, there, there is a pandemic. There really is a pandemic going around the earth right now, and it's called fearitis. Yes. And it's uh, afflicting about three-fourths of humanity. And it's a serious illness. It's causing death and destruction in many parts of the world. And um, it, until we can face our own fears, we're going to be subject to the media manipulation, wanting us to be scared because that's one of the ways that the so-called power elite try to control us is through fear. Mm -hmm. And um, fear is, is a form of the belief in separation. If we believe we're tiny, frail little human beings all alone in a hostile universe full of impersonal forces, then yeah, we're going to be afraid. Mm -hmm. But if we recognize that we are children of God created in the image and likeness of God and that the kingdom of heaven is within us and that the power is within us, then we are not going to be afraid. And we can also be objective at the same time. We can say, okay, I was in uh, Serbia when the COVID thing began and everything got locked down. And fortunately, the internet worked throughout the whole thing. And I did a bunch of research very quickly because I had a little bit of extra time with everything I was doing. And it was very clear to me within two weeks of this thing that it was not a deadly pandemic with like Black Plague that kills 40% of the population or something like that. And I realized, oh, this is uh, something that at the beginning, people were afraid because they didn't know what it was. And then more and more data came out and it became obvious that it was barely worse than influenza. 
And so I just started becoming objective and I started saying, okay, what do I really need in order to have a healthy human life on this planet? And there's not that much that we require as human beings. We need uh, maybe a certain temperature range until we learn how to transcend the need for a certain temperature range. And then we have um, the need for food until we learn how to transcend the need for food. And I've met a couple of breatharians who don't eat or drink, uh, who have reached a level uh, which I call 4.75 in the physical, okay. um, which is the upper range of the yogis. You know, the, the yogis tend to be between 4.5 and 4.75 in the physical. Now, their consciousness could be much higher. They could be 6, 7, 8, all the way up to 12 in consciousness, but their physical bodies are in the 4.5 to 4.5. 75 range and then once you get beyond 4.75 you have very little need of anything in the physical world you can walk through a forest fire without being burned once you get close to level five mm -hmm. and this is what they call the immortal crystal light body okay so in order to get there though you do have to let go of your core negative beliefs and of course the deepest one is the belief in separation which is what uh, generates fear so for the average person who just says, well, how do I start? What do I do first? And the first thing you do is you become aware of your fears, you know, and you become aware. In this case, a lot of people are becoming aware. The media and the, and the medical profession are not our friends. Mm -hmm. they, they're in it for themselves. I'm not saying every doctor. Yes, there's a few really good doctors out there. But the vast majority have bought into the pharmaceutical mindset and it's all about pushing drugs. The only difference between the drug cartels and the pharmaceutical industry is that one's legal and one isn't, basically. You got it. <laughs> you got so it. you become aware that 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 it's it's a fear-based society. And then you say, okay, where are my fears? You know, go go within and say, okay, what are my fears? Am I afraid that I'm gonna die in a famine or a drought or a flood or a war? or a pandemic or something, you know, and start dealing with your fears. Start using psychological tools and spiritual tools to transcend your fears. Oh, boy. What a ride it's been, huh? Yeah, and it is going to get more intense probably until about the year 2025. So that's about three years from now. Okay. That's the peak of what we call the galactic shift that's mentioned in my Second book, Earth Changes and Beyond, we, we go into some detail on that. It's mentioned again in Earth Awakens and the Real History of the Earth. So let me ask you this. When it comes to setting ourselves up for success with being able to experience the physical ascension, what are tangible things that we need to be doing to help speed up that process so that we can support Earth? Well, in the book, Soul Integration, I have a list of about 40 to 45 things you can do to raise your physical vibration. And I'm going to rewrite the book probably in the next couple of years because um, there are a few changes I've made since I originally wrote the book, okay. uh, probably 15 years ago, whenever it was. And, um, and so the order, the priority order of the things that will raise your vibration has changed. Number one is to spend time in the in the presence of high vibrational souls. Okay. Now, fortunately, with Zoom and Skype and other online formats, it's possible to attend mm -hmm. workshops, as we all know, online mm -hmm. with enlightened teachers. And there's some of them even offer them for free. Mm -hmm. Some are reasonable, some are unreasonable in terms of cost. So you get the whole gamut from one teacher who charges seven thousand for a five day workshop to others who give their work away. Right. And um, and so you have that option if you don't happen to live in a spiritual Mecca like Sedona or Mount Shasta or someplace like that, you, and you you don't want to have to deal with the air, airplanes and the, and the crowded airports and stuff and, and the cost of accommodations in those places, you can attend online. So it's not quite as powerful as if you're there in person, mm -hmm. but a lot of the vibrations do get transmitted through the online mediums mm -hmm. because we're all one right. and time and space ultimately are meaningless, ultimately. Uh, so that's number one, you know, uh, 
find some enlightened teachers, study their works, read their books, attend their online workshops. And number two is meditation. There's lots of forms of meditation. Some people pr prefer Vipassana style where you sit in a lotus posture. Mm -hmm. Some prefer chanting or, or um, having music in the background, sacred movement like Tai Chi and Qigong. And there's different forms of meditation, obviously. And, and they, one size does not fit all. Mm -hmm. So you may discover that Vipassana is not, not your style. Maybe you want to do some gentle yoga with your meditation, like some sim simple movement processes. Maybe you want uh, sacred music in the background, you know, so you kind of have to decide, you know, what what is the style of meditation that I most resonate with? Mm -hmm. The purpose of meditation is to observe your consciousness from a non-judgmental place, to simply watch the stream of consciousness, to observe it from a state of pure awareness. That, so that's meditation. Uh, the next one is breathing. One of the simplest things that most of us take for granted, and I was a rebirther for a number of years. In addition to rebirthing, there's primal therapy, breath of fire, holotropic breath work, kundalini yoga, kriya yoga, and various other disciplines that use breathing. I just got introduced to another breathing yoga recently uh, while I was in Mexico. Mm -hmm. And I don't know if it has a name. It's just a, a breathing yoga. Okay. So you can um, do some research into different breathing techniques. Um, on a physical level, it, breathing oxygenates the blood, moves impurities out of the system, and can put large numbers of illnesses into remission if it's used properly, mm -hmm. uh, especially in combination with other techniques. So that's number three. And then yoga is probably number four, different types of yoga practices. Uh, subconscious reprogramming exercises is number five. That could be the Silva method, past life regression, timeline healing, theta healing, and other disciplines. Um, and then there's like 20 some more things like eating a pure diet, um, listening to your biorhythms and sleeping when your biorhythms are at a certain point and, and, you know, wearing loose fit cotton clothing as opposed to tight fitting acrylics and things like that. Um, using natural cosmetics. There's a whole lot of them on the list. Uh, th these are the ones that people are probably the most familiar with. Um, staying away from electromagnetic pollution, which is very difficult to do if you live in a large city. It's almost impossible with the amount of satellites they're launching weekly. I think it's about 65 right now. I recently um, interviewed Arthur Fistenberg. Are you familiar with his work? He wrote the book, mm -hmm. The Invisible Rainbow. So his specialty is all EMF and he goes through the history of EMF. He even correlates how every single new pandemic that we've experienced with some sort of virus that has creeped in also correlates with a new technology that was released at the same time. And it just so happens with COVID, we also launched 5G. So, you know. Yeah, there's there does seem to be a correlation. What I observed when they turned on 5G in my area was that I became more sensitive to, to the negatives uh, a little bit and not knowing obvious for obvious reasons what a PMS feels like. I kind of equated it to, to a PMS, you know, where, where the, the woman is more sensitive to things than usual for two or three days before the period, you know. <laughs> yeah, well, maybe this explains all of these women, myself included, going into early menopause. It's insane what is happening right now in terms of fertility for both men and women over the last two years. That's also mentioned in the prophecies that with my guides that, that we know that the sperm count has dropped in half for men over the last 50 years. Yeah. For women, it's not quite half, but it's a pretty big drop. And when people come to me wanting to have babies and they're having, having trouble having babies, the first thing I do is I ask my guides to perform a test which takes about 10 seconds mm -hmm. on what the fertility and potency rate is in the couple that are wanting a child. Mm -hmm. And more and more, it's in what I call the 60 percentile range between 60 and 70 percent of normal. 
which means, yeah, they can still have children, but they've got to work at it a lot more than they would have 50 years ago right. when maybe they were in the 80 to 90 percent of normal range. And so it's, you know, now you add the effects of vaccines and um, they, they, there are some studies out there. I, I'm always careful to to say, you know, do your research because it's not 100 percent sure that the numbers are correct. Right. But there's one study where the fertility dropped as much as 80 percent in women who had been double vaccinated over women who had not been vaccinated with COVID. So um, I know some women who've had healthy babies who've gotten the full dose of vaccines and boosters. So obviously my guides told me 98% of the population uh, who just get the two main shots are going to be okay. And about 95% of the population who get the boosters are going to be okay. But that still leaves 5% of humanity, which if you do 5% of 88 billion, you know, you're, you're in the hundreds of millions. <laughs> right. Which is significant. And we're seeing the impact of that now almost daily. Um, such incredible information. So what I'm hearing you say is that a lot of these things that we can do to impact our physical ascension, in my opinion, these have been very targeted parts of our life that have been manipulated in ways to kind of keep us stuck in that whole matrixy type of mindset and belief system. Yeah, keep it in mind this way. The, um, the so-called dark forces, dark Illuminati, power elite, whatever you want to call them, are desperate to maintain their illusion of control over planet Earth. You know, they've been living in that illusion for a while with our complicity, uh, most of us, I'm not speaking all of us, but most of us have been complicit in giving them, at least believing they have power over us. You know, that's whether it's through the banking system, the educational system, the churches, the, the governments, or the military, you know, it's it's like, oh, yeah, it's pretty easy to convince ourselves that we're powerless against a military, you know, with who's got all these weapons and stuff like that. Right. So we have given our power away to this idea of these uh, so-called power elites. But now they're that people are waking up. They're starting to get scared. They're getting desperate. They're saying, wait a minute, we're, our, we're getting busted. Our illusion is going to be, you know gone pretty soon what are we going to do because deep underneath the illusion as i said is the fear of inadequacy right. and so they're trying everything they're no longer being polite about it no. it's, it's like right out in the open yes. and, and so it's like you know they're they're like a caged a cornered animal mm -hmm. you know and so they're lashing out they're trying to do everything they can to shut down the light workers to shut down the people who are waking up it's not going to work it's inevitable that people are going to wake up um is there going to be some uh collateral damage is one of their favorite phrases yes of course there is um a lot of some people are not going to make it through and um and maybe that's as it should be, um, it's, it's not for me to decide. Mm -hmm. It's a free will decision whether, you know, some people do put themselves in harm's way, uh, what they would call martyrs or, or you know, the so-called patriots that uh, want to water the tree of liberty with their blood, you know, that all that whole side of things. Yeah. Um, I'm not judging that as right or wrong. It's just a, one of the observations that there are people who do feel that if they have to give up their lives in the service of, defeating the dark forces now i don't believe in defeating dark forces because that's giving them power it's making them real mm -hmm. the dark forces are not real the human beings who believe there are dark forces are real mm -hmm. so we have to change their consciousness um and and the best way to do that obviously is by example yeah. you know the, the day comes when someone who's stuck in darkness looks out and they see you or me or someone meditating and being peaceful and calm and, and at first they make fun of us and then eventually they say well maybe there is something to that meditation after all maybe i should learn more about it and that's when the change begins mm -hmm. so um and I, there are people with lots of money who are relatively enlightened they're not all not all rich people are bad you know right. um a lot of them are possessed by their their wealth of course but not all of them Right. So let me ask you a question with with um, these these things that are occurring and, you know, people are 
having to make significant changes around their belief systems and through their beliefs changing, they're having to take action. And I'll give an example. So for instance, I just saw that in LA County, more than 10,000 children are missing from the registry for the new school year as compared to the year before. So these are parents who are no longer willing to subject their children to these corrupt systems, and they're finding alternative means to educate their children in a way that is more aligned with their belief system. So ultimately, these things might appear as being really scary because there's so much you know, uncertainty and unknown around them. But ultimately, these are necessary occurrences that are going to have to happen in order to create new systems to replace the corrupted systems to support Earth and humanity in this new ascension. Is that correct? Absolutely. And people are getting back to the idea of what are tangible things I can do to change things in a positive direction. Again, it may start with noncompliance. Right. Um, you know, and that means uh, refusing to put ch uh, masks on children, yes. refusing to vaccinate young children. Um, and if everybody, if a large number of people are in noncompliance, there's very little they can do. And, and if they try to do something, it's going to be obvious to everybody that, that uh, even now it's like there's, uh, I would say, maybe 50 or 60 percent of the population that uh, realizes that the vaccines are not effective. Mm -hmm. um, there's still going to be those who just refuse to look, you know, who are just hypnotized by CNN and BBC and they're, they're just going to um, blindly believe what they're told, even in the face of overwhelming evidence. I mean, you know, the evidence is overwhelming. In Britain, 97% of the serious illnesses from COVID are in vaccinated. Mm -hmm. Only 3% are in the unvaccinated. I think we can look at Israel as a good example because they were the first ones. They have the largest vaccination rates and they also have the highest rates of COVID. I think that that's- And their mortality has gone up by 80%. It's almost doubled. I know it's- insane it's insane so for for all of those listening i want to just share something when i read sal's work when i went through when i got introduced to your material i consumed everything i could i was literally like give it to me baby i need more because it was just so impactful and so with all of the stuff that's happening and for those souls that are really buying into, you know, into the matrix concepts and staying stuck in this fear and believing in the vaccination and compliance and all of this. Initially, before I was introduced to your work, I was angry. I was like, what in the hell is wrong with these people? Why can't they get it together? But then after I read your book and understand their soul contracts and the lessons that they needed to learn and how they still are attached to the pain and suffering and there are still there's still more pain and suffering that their souls need to experience before they can choose to make that ascend. So when you when I was introduced to this idea and concept it shifted my belief system and allowed me to actually, which is what you were preaching, and I just couldn't understand it, this idea of love and compassion. It allowed me to approach their circumstances and what they're experiencing in their belief system from a compassionate, loving place saying, oh, their souls need more pain and suffering. They're not ready to detach from that yet. It's unfortunate, but it is what it is. And I have family members that I'm speaking about specifically that I had to let go of the attachment to them not wanting to get on board and to be open to the information that is available, all of the facts that are available. It allowed me to let go of that attachment to feeling like I needed to save them, feeling like I needed to educate them. So I want to thank you so much for your work. So that point that you just made, I, I think that, that that kind of stands on its own merit. Um, I would take it even one step further. There's a lot of people that hate the president or they hate Putin or they hate Zelensky or they hate the, the premier of China. 
or whatever, these people need our love and compassion. If we send them love and compassion, they are much more likely to wake up and realize the things they're doing that are destructive mm -hmm. than if we send them hatred. Now, I'm not saying we should deny our feelings. If we're if we have a lot of emotion coming up around, let's say, the war in Ukraine, for example, you know, I have friends in both Ukraine and Russia. So, yeah, it's 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 a tough situation. But but if I allow my emotions to take over and rule me, then obviously I just become part of the problem. And I could say I I hate that Putin. I hate that Zelensky or whatever it is. You know, all that's doing is putting fuel on the fire. Right. So we have to be able to step back and say, wait a minute, these people need love and compassion. And just maybe if they get enough love and compassion, they will change their behavior. Mm -hmm. They will no longer be acting out of anger and out of the need to control others. They will start to recognize, wait a minute, you know, this is this is hurting people. Mm -hmm. well, my, my decisions are hurting people. And I think to that point, for me personally, I can speak to once I was able to have that shift, all of the sudden my interactions in this current reality no longer had the amount of triggers that previously were occurring for me as I was going about my day and interacting in the world and society. Once I was able to have that mindset shift and, and approach it from love and compassion, all of the sudden, all of those triggers, all of those negative beings and entities that were trying to, you know, get a response out of me, it's like they just went away. It was like they just completely disappeared from my reality and my experience. So this was a really powerful realization or awareness for me because it allowed me to then want to lean even deeper into that love, deeper into that compassion. And through that, it has completely shifted my reality experience and how I'm interacting in this world amongst all of the chaos right now. Good. Again, excellent point. And I want to add one more thing to that, and that is being patient with ourselves. Most of us have been programmed our whole life through the government indoctrination centers called public schools and, and you know, and so on. And to, uh, to deprogram ourselves is not always that easy. It, it takes a lot of time and focus and in some cases repeating statements of truth until they get deeply embedded in the subconscious. And we're, we're likely to fall back or seem to fall back from time to time into an old behavior mm -hmm. when we think we have finished that behavior. And that's most of us. Right. And so we have to be compassionate and gentle with ourselves as we go through the process of unlearning the propaganda that's been foisted upon us since an early age by well-meaning parents or well-meaning teachers. And and just really give ourselves permission to mess up occasionally. Um, I love that point, and I'm so glad you brought it up. I do feel a little targeted <laughs> because I laugh all the time. I'm like, I know that one of my life lessons that I needed to experience here was really being able to embody patience. <laughs> I see patience being a theme over and over and over, you know, and and I know that God has an appointed time for me and that I have to be patient in this journey that I'm on. And eventually I'll get that, I'll get that knowledge, you know, that, that little nudge that says, okay, it's your appointed time. Now let's go. So in the meantime, I'm really having to lean in and embrace that whole idea of patience. And I, I want patience and I want it now. That's exactly. Right. And so, <laughs> I think that this is probably a pretty um, common theme amongst most of society, especially as technology continues to advance in you know astronomical exponential ways. We are becoming more and more impatient, which makes this whole process and specifically letting go of attachment to expectation and outcomes even more challenging for us to manage. Yeah, the, the technology is a two-edged sword because on the one hand, we live in an era where we can push a few buttons on a computer and a message can go out to thousands of people, mm -hmm. which we never had until the last 50 years and really not till the last 20 years. But on the other hand, you know, there's a, a whole generation growing up right now who thinks 
that that everything is just going to be at the push of a button and they don't really have to do any work on themselves and I... and and you can see um I, I hardly ever go to the cinema to movies but um most of the movies now are so fast paced that that my my senses start to shut down yeah because i'm not programmed for that fast paced constantly in your face action and yet yeah. th that's what the younger generation seems to want mm -hmm. that you know they could figure out a phone in 20 minutes it would take me two weeks to figure out you know and so they're very quick very sharp but they're lacking the depth mm -hmm. that's necessary in most cases so with that being said majority my understanding is majority of these souls that are incarnating right now in our present time these souls are already conditioned and ready for this ascension process. Is this true? Is there truth to this? There, there's some truth to that. There are certain categories of souls. You know, we have the indigo children, the crystal children, the rainbow children. And now we have the star seeds, which are souls that have had very few lifetimes on Earth and who are more identified with other places. Mm -hmm. And they're coming in, and of course, they feel like fish out of water, which in a way they are. Right. But they also don't have the karma that many of us came in with. And so mm -hmm. uh, they, their creative abilities are very quick. You know, they don't have anything weighing them down if they haven't gone through lifetimes of negative karma. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, they also have a hard time relating to many of the systems that are going on difficult time making friends and things like that so there's a lot going on in terms of the star seed children and the crystal children and all the other groups mm -hmm. that have come in purposely to help humanity at this time we got to get going with this because it's it's going to be on extinction otherwise <laughs> so well, I, th I I still do uh, subscribe to what the founders have said. I think by the year 2040, the population of Earth is going to be about 2 billion. Yeah. It's not going to go down to 500,000 million like the Georgia Guidestones, you know, but it, it yeah. may drop about 80% at some point. Well, I guess this would be, if it would normally go up to 10 billion with natural progression, instead it will go down to about 2 billion. So that would be an 80% reduction. Yeah, it's pretty significant. So I'm curious, uh, are you familiar with the term false spirituality? False spirituality? Like false light, these, this whole concept of individuals um, being indoctrinated into what they think is actually spirituality, but really it's working for the other side. Well, uh, I'm going to come to the word judgment. You know, when, when you're working with spirits, spirit guides, channeled information is especially. Um, the thing is to really dive deep into, is there judgment involved in the message or the process or the practice? And that is the, the main, I mean, there's other things you can look for as well. Like, you know, is the leader of a particular thing? It's like the difference between a cult and a true spiritual teaching. Mm -hmm. It's all the energy being concentrated on the leader. Is the leader running around with yachts and private planes, and the and the and the practitioners are starving, nearly starving. You know, mm -hmm. which I've seen many times. I think we've all seen examples of cults. Right. Um, right. But it, let's say it's a, neg a negative entity posing as a positive entity. Well, if you're tuned in, you're going to know right away by the quality of the vibration of that entity. But you can also look for signs in their message. For example, beings who talk down to humanity, like those those poor, miserable human beings down there on that backward prison planet. You know, right. that's not an enlightened spirit guide speaking if, if they're using language like that. Right. They look across to us. They see us as magnificent children of God. Mm -hmm. And and that's you know all the higher beings. That's how they are. They they see our greatness even if we don't see our greatness. And they they might lovingly point out some things that we're doing that are getting in our own way. You know, have you considered this or have you considered that? But they don't order us around and say you have to stop doing that or you can't do that. Um, so look for for judgment in the message, and if and if you're getting patronized, talked down to, uh, made wrong for what you're doing, um, and and you feel a lack of love in the message, you can be pretty sure it's not an enlightened entity speaking through that channel. 
I really appreciate you speaking to that because as more and more people are having this awakening experience and they're confused and they're desperate and they're seeking guidance and help, there's a lot of unfortunate individuals out there that want to manipulate and take advantage of the opportunity, right? So I love the way that you put that utilizing judgment, discernment, going into your heart. What is your intuitive feeling feel about what you're receiving. I think those are all such great tips. So I appreciate you speaking. And also, uh, not everybody who charges a lot, but most people who charge a lot, um, there, there's something not right there. Right. Um, they can, you know, have a very large sliding scale and say, well, if you don't have much money, it's $100. If you have lots of money, it's $1,000. You know, they can do that, you know, just yeah. make it available to everyone. But then these exclusive people that charge 7000 for a five-day workshop, you know, they're going to get just very wealthy people that can afford to just plunk down 7000 on a seminar. Um, and so that's another scene. You know, some people, they, they get real famous and then it goes to their head. Yeah. And they yeah. say, oh, now that I'm famous, I can charge $2,000 for a reading instead of 200 And, um, you know, so you have to kind of look out for that. And this is not to say that we shouldn't live an abundant life. Everybody should be living in luxury. There shouldn't right. be one human being that's not. And we have the technology that everybody could be living in luxury. Mm -hmm. But when it's coming from this, you know, you know, people that you know, and they, they make it big and then they change. Oh, yeah. And they're, no, they're no longer, they don't have time for the so-called little people, you know. Right. Well, and a lot of the messages that I'm seeing in, in mainstream social media amongst, you know, um, teachers, enlightened beings who are helping to support others they almost are guilting individuals if they're not willing to invest the seven, eight, nine, ten thousand dollars into a program to work with them and making them feel bad if they can't afford it. So we've got a lot of individuals who are going out there, putting themselves into, you know, massive credit card debt, borrowing money to be able to participate in these programs. And so it's unfortunate. I see a lot of that going on. And I just wanted to have a, a small conversation around that because I know that there are a lot of people out there who are desperately, desperately seeking support. And they well, don't. For example, to toot my own horn for a moment, I, my timeline healing program consists of three levels. And then there's a teacher's training. And all three levels of timeline healing, you can get for way, well under $1,000. Yeah. And, you know, and I know there's, uh, I guess the, the person who you could compare me to is Viana Skittle, who does the uh, faded healing. And she charges a little more than that. I don't think she charges an outrageous amount, but maybe maybe 50% uh, higher. I don't know. But um, but then there's, and I, I shouldn't mention names, but Deepak Chopra is the name that comes to mind. He charges 7000 yeah. for a five-day seminar. And, you know, he's got some good material. And he wrote a couple books about enlightenment that are pretty good. But. You know, why does he need seven? You know, he's a wealthy man already. Why does he need seven thousand dollars for a five day workshop? Yeah. And and he, you know, using names, he is someone that I would probably label as being one of these false light practitioners who are taking advantage of individuals who are in desperate need of guidance and support. So I um I have another question to kind of shift topics a little bit. The sun. What role is the sun playing in all of this ascension process? Well, the entire solar system, and this is detailed in the book, Earth Changes and Beyond, the entire solar system is going through what we call the galactic shift. It's been given other names, the photon belt and the electromagnetic null zone are two other terms for the same phenomenon. Mm -hmm. And it's basically a, an area of space where the electromagnetic polarities decrease. So there's not as much polarity at the electromagnetic level. And this is uh, allowing the veils to be somewhat lifted around the Earth. Now, we're in the time called apocalypse. Mm -hmm. It's an exact definition. Of, it applies exactly. Mm -hmm. It means the lifting of the veil or the revealing of all that has been hidden. That's the literal meaning of the word apocalypse. And so we're in a time when everything's coming to the surface and it's being catalyzed by this galactic shift. And so the sun is, and all the planets are going through it together. So there's a change happening on all the planets. There's a change happening in the sun itself. 
it's it's being attuned to these less polar polarized what we call scalar electromagnetic pulses are what's coming in now to the sun and then this from the cosmos from the center central sun of the universe and then it's being relayed into the earth from the sun so yes the sun is going through changes and it is partly why the frequencies of Earth are going up. So, so, so Intuitively, that's what I felt. I just wanted to get your confirmation on that. You are such a wealth of knowledge. And I just love how you don't. I think one of the things that I love about the way you present the information is you don't present it from this highly emotional place, this highly activated emotional place that many others approach it from, right? So, with the way that you write your books, with the interviewing, you just come from it from a very neutral place of this is what it is, here's what we can do. And I love that about you. I truly, truly appreciate well, that. Well, thank you. And, and I, I try to find a balance between being more like a robot and being a drama king. Somewhere in between those two extremes is a happy place. Yeah. Well, I think you have definitely found it. And you are such a, um, you're just such a breath of light. You know, <laughs> it's funny because when you were talking about earlier ways that we can uh, support that physical ascension and being in the presence of other enlightened beings, even though we're conducting this through Zoom, my heart has felt your energetic vibration the entire time. And the more truth that you speak, I can feel feel that radiating at in the center of my heart in those in those neurons that are inside that heart that are holding all of that memory of our truth it's like they're in there just jumping around with excitement so it's very exciting to to have an opportunity to interview someone with so much experience you know when i read your book and learned that you had your awakening process in the 70s i was like how the hell have you done this? How have you done this? And then ultimately, after we had that first interview almost a year ago, the words that you spoke, spoke to me, it was like you delivered code that unlocked truths within me that shifted my ability to change the perspective, change the belief system, surrender, and really just have an understanding that was so impactful. And, and I am forever grateful for, for that. Well, it's I'm grateful to be able to assist you in your process. And, you know, sometimes we can see the difference we make and sometimes we can't. But I want to kind of sum up by telling the listeners that we're all powerful, creative, spiritual beings. That's my favorite affirmation. I am a powerful, creative, spiritual being. And if everyone who's listening or who does, gets the archives or whatever uh, does that uh, does that affirmation, I am a powerful, creative, spiritual being, and repeats it every time you're tempted to buy into the pandemic called fearitis, that's the best time to sit down and remind yourself, I am a powerful, creative, spiritual being. I am not a fearful, frail, miserable little sinner cast out of the kingdom of God because I committed some horrible sin no i am an innocent child of god as innocent as the day god created me not that there's such a thing as the day god created me you know we, we have an eternal self that's beyond time and space so um i would i would encourage everybody to use that affirmation and do not buy into the fear-mongering media the left-right paradigm the uh you know this this politician is good and this one is bad I'm not saying they're all bad, but you know most of them are are corrupted, and uh, you know they they want to maintain their illusion of power, and that that's more important to them than really caring about the people they're supposed to serve. So um, don't don't buy into it. Don't buy you know, and use non-compliance. You know, refuse to put masks on your children. Refuse to give them untested, unsafe vaccines. Um, you know, whatever ways you can you can use non-compliance thank you for those three very actionable tips that individuals can take right now to start empowering themselves waking up to the remembrance of who they truly are and stepping into that and 
This has been such a pleasure, Sal. I cannot thank you enough. Um, it's always so exciting to have an opportunity to chat with you, pick your brain, get your perspective of where we're at, how things have shifted. I will definitely be picking up the secrets of unlimited energy. I will probably be in touch after I have read that one. And I have to just type my website here in the chat. Oh, fabulous. Um, I will make sure that all of your website ways that they can connect with you will be included in the show notes. This will be on YouTube, Spotify, iTunes, all the all the major um, platforms. So how can the, um, so is the best way for them to reach you through your website? Probably, yeah, I would say, or I can also put my email up here. Okay, I will include both of those links for the audience. And again, thank you so much for your time, your presence, your participation in this conversation today. I can't thank you enough. And thank you for having me. And you have a wonderful, blessed rest of the day. Thank you. You as well. Thanks for joining us on the Think Yourself Healthy podcast. Make sure you leave a review and let me know what you think. I love reading your feedback. Come hang out with me on Instagram at Heather Duranja. And don't forget to take a screenshot that you're listening to the podcast and tag me. I love to share it. See you on the next episode.